What is up my new Vim friends? Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about note taking and how you can move all your note taking into Obsidian instead of Notion. I actually use NeoVim in a lot of circumstances as a partner to the Obsidian app. I've been loving this. I wanted to share my experience going from Notion to Obsidian and all the really awesome goodies that are in these apps. With Obsidian, you can use Vim motions and improve your editing ability and reduce the amount you need to reach for the mouse. What I'm gonna cover in this video is advantages of Obsidian, migrating to Obsidian, configuring the desktop app, and finally configuring the obsidian.invim plugin so you can use NeoVim to edit all your notes and manage your personal knowledge garden. First off, I just wanna mention that Notion is a great application. I've been using it for many years now, and it's been the hub where I store all of my information so I can have it digitally and be able to search through it quickly. This is amazing. The other thing that Notion is really good at is you can actually share anything you want with groups or people, just send them an email, give them a link, and they quickly have access to it. So this is really good for collaboration, which I think that Notion still plays that role inside of my day-to-day -day workflow. However, I've constantly run into lag or connectivity issues. Like if I don't have internet, then I can't get into my notes and start editing them, which is a real problem. I wanna be able to edit my notes agnostic of if I'm connected to the internet. As someone who is really into keyboard shortcuts and using Vim motions, I found that Notion is pretty lacking and you aren't able to customize any of the key mappings. You're just stuck with the defaults. I also am constantly looking for a word and searching through a document and then I need to be able to jump and edit it, but I can't do that. So in this workflow, I'm going to search for code, which you can see at the bottom here. I find it. I want to hit enter and go to it and start editing and adding a new bullet point, but I can't do that. I have to actually escape out of here. And then if I go up or down, I can then go all the way down, hit enter, and then I can add a new bullet point or modify this. This is just too slow and a clear advantage for Obsidian because you can use Vim motions to do that editing, which you're going to get a lot of speed and efficiency just from making that switch. On top of that, you can then have everything local. So everything in Obsidian is just a file structure. And so you can have all your files locally and they can be present. You don't have to have any internet connectivity to be able to modify and edit your files. This segues nicely into another benefit, which you're controlling your data. It's all just files, .md files, and you have it all locally. So you can manage it however you want. There's many different options for syncing and backing up which I'll get into later in this video. So Obsidian has a lot of really great advantages for me personally, which is keeping these notes and capturing things for content creation or for keeping things for my personal knowledge garden and growing my second brain. To export your data, first, we're gonna need to go into Notion, which I'm in here right now. If you hit Command and Comma, this will open up this menu where you can see your settings. Click on Settings right here and go into this page right here and you'll see an option to export all workspace content. Click on this and you'll want to change this to HTML and everything include databases. Uh, this is what I've I've had in my options and I've left this option to create folders for sub pages. You can leave this off if you don't want this, but I would recommend it. Then hit export. And after a little while, you should see an email and also a download link show up in your inbox. Once your download has completed, you should see something pop up in your updates, and then you can click this download button and it'll take you to a website and download to your downloads folder if you're on a Mac. We can continue following this page here that outlines how to import data from Notion. Basically, we went through the export part and we should get a zip file. Next, we wanna follow this part where we're importing our data into Obsidian. Now first, let's actually go download the Obsidian app so I have Mac OS and so I'm gonna download this and install it. All right, next up, we're gonna open settings and go to community plugins and install a plugin called Importer. So first let's open up our Obsidian app and let's create a new vault. So let's do my vault and then we'll pick a place. I'm just gonna put this underneath my documents and we'll open this and under this looks correct and we'll create. Now this is gonna open on my other screen, but if we drag it over here, then we see that it opens in a couple of things. We see a nice graph view and a little welcome template here. So these don't matter so much. And we're gonna to need to do a command comma. 
And this will open up our settings, which is agnostic of whatever application. This just works on Mac OS, but you're going to open up settings. Next, you're going to open up community plugins and turn on community plugins, which it gives you a little bit of a security thing here because you are pulling in code from outside sources. So make sure that you check each of these plugins before you enable them. We're going to turn this on and then we're going to and then we're going to browse. Then we're going to look for importer. And this is the one that we want. We want to install this one. It's going to install. You can click this to dismiss them. And then if we go back, if you stay on this community plugins page, then you should see we have this importer. We want to enable it. And then from there, after we've enabled it, we can close this and do command P to open up the command palette and we can open importer. From here, we want to select what type it was and it's a notion zip. And then we want to choose our file, which for me is going to be under downloads, this guy, and then output folder. We'll call this notion uh, export and then save pages in subfolders. And we'll leave the single line breaks alone and we'll import from here. You should see a screen like this where you're importing all of your files and I'll fast forward through this to get everything loaded. All right, success. We're done loading all of our notion information into obsidian. From here, we'll install a few plugins and I'll get you off the ground and running. All right, one of the first things to do is open up again our settings with command comma and we can go into editor. And from here, we can see that at the bottom, bottom, bottom here, you can enable Vim key bindings and you're going to be presented with a quiz. If you don't know the answer to this, then you probably don't want to use Vim, but the way to exit is to colon Q and quit. So let me enable Vim. And now Vim is correctly enabled. Next, we can go check out some hotkeys. This is how you can customize every single hotkey and add whatever makes sense to you. For me, I like to enable for the quick switcher instead of command O. I like it to be command K, which is similar to how Notion is and a lot of other things. So we can override that and we have a conflict. So what we can do is clear this and we can press hotkey command K see the two that we actually are using and we'll kill this one so that we can use our quick switcher with command K. So I've tried not to go too crazy with all the different plugins that I use, but some of the really popular ones are calendar, which will show you a little calendar view in your pane here on the right hand side, and you can associate daily notes and also weekly notes. There's a really good video that I'll link in the bottom on how to do that with journaling. And then next up data view, this is how to get queries and do some really awesome things and basically get a lot of the database functionality you might be used to in notion. Next up is Git, And so I back up my vault into Git, and there's a difference between syncing and backing up. So if you're backing up, you're going to have a copy that you can restore. If you're syncing, then I use something else called sync thing. And I'll get into that in here in just a second, but I use Git for backing up my vault. So I have a, I have a copy myself. Kanban, this is a different board to move cards around. This is nice for refactoring notes and pulling them out into new notes. Tasks is for doing little check boxes and having some other nice data views. Templater is really beneficial for having custom templates and being able to use JavaScript or other things to trigger workflows. And then of course, VimRC support. I have a couple of options here. I use JJ for escaping out of insert mode in Vim. So this is my list of plugins and definitely check them out if you're interested. And these are the ones that I have landed on after not spending too much time. I mentioned before that there's a difference between backing up and syncing and Obsidian actually provides a paid version where you can just sync things to your mobile device or multiple computers. And it's called Obsidian Sync. I think it's $8 a month. Um, and so it's, it's not cheap, but it actually supports the team and goes to supporting this awesome app that is free. So consider that if you just want something that is plug and play other options that are available. I mentioned that I use sync thing where I'm going from Mac OS to Android. So this is really helpful. And then if you have other things that you're working with today, then consider doing Dropbox or Google drive or iCloud, something else to note is that if you want your notes on iPhone or iPad, then these are really the only options that you have. So you either need to do iCloud Drive or you need to use their Obsidian Sync. These other services aren't supported yet, 
So consider that and maybe consider doing Obsidian Sync if you're wanting to sync to those devices. All right, finally the best part where we're gonna configure NeoVim to work alongside our Obsidian app. And so this awesome plugin, obsidian.invim, is how we're gonna accomplish that. So this plugin has some awesome features and if we scroll down a little bit, you can see that you can do all the different wiki links and markdown and tags just like you would. Now there's some limitations like viewing images and, and copy and pasting images that I've run into that you want to use the Obsidian app. But overall, this is a great experience for just going into Markdown, quickly editing notes and searching and finding. So you can use your normal NeoVim setup to accomplish all of that. And I'll show you how to set this up. So if we switch over to our NeoVim, then we can fire this up. And if we go to our lazyvim.lua, so in here, if we have our, if we look for Obsidian, then you can see that I have this block here that is installing the Obsidian InVim plugin. It's lazy. It's only going to work on Markdown files, which is the FT. And then it's got a dependency of Plenary, which you should have it already if you're using Telescope or many of the other plugins that I've recommended on this channel. So once you have this installed, make sure it is actually installed whenever you restart NeoVim or fire up lazy. And then let's jump over to configuring it. We can do that by looking for obsidian.lua, which for me, I have everything in like an after plugin, but wherever you add the configuration files for your different plugins, then you can add this to that list. And essentially this is just gonna do our setup. And so I have just my Obsidian Vault here where I've configured the path for where it's gonna live. And then these are mostly just defaults. I actually went in and killed some of the mappings because I couldn't get the GF function to work, but I'll revisit that at a future date, see if I can get that to work again. And most of this is stock. The only thing I've also added is this templates directory, which I adjusted the date format. And so the year month day is a little different. And then I have a templates directory inside of my vault. And that's where all these templates are stored. So I have a yesterday and tomorrow because there's all already a built in date command that gives us today. And whenever I'm taking notes, usually one of those three days, either it's yesterday, today, or tomorrow. You'll likely run into something where you have to set the conceal option. You'll see that error message show up. And what I've done is I've set that in my options Lua. Down here at the bottom, I have this conceal level set to two. This will allow Obsidian to do some nice highlighting or some concealing and do some cool things with Markdown. So you'll probably see this error come up. There's something about it in the docs, but just as a heads up, you'll have to set this to one or two. I just picked two. To make use of all the Obsidian searching, you will want to set some different key maps. And so if we look for Obsidian in this remaps file, then you can see a few of these. This one is going to toggle checkboxes on and off. Uh, then we're gonna do inserting Obsidian template like I showed a minute ago, or we're inserting the date or other templates like a data table or something like that. Then you can see that those get inserted, showing backlinks, showing links, uh, creating a note. This is creating a new note and then doing a search or a quick search. So search will look for any string and then quick search is what we configured to be command K inside the app. And I just have these mapped all starting with leader O and then some character that makes sense to me. What this looks like in practice is firing up NeoVim and then doing some kind of a quick search to find something with like Ruby and going into here and you can see I have a link to a nested structure, looking at turbo streams on Ruby on Rails. And in here, then I can see some of the highlighting. So for this one, it has some HTML. And let's say I wanted to modify this so I can add a new markdown section. So something, something cool, I could spell something cool. And then write that. And then if we go to our Obsidian app, then we can see that that gets appended down here into something cool. So it syncs very quickly. And whenever I open and close, then the get backup will fire. And then sync thing is also running in the background as well, syncing all of this and backing it up automatically for me. Really awesome stuff. And one of the things that I've just been blown away by is the speed of this. It's super fast, super performant. And I don't think I'm ever gonna go back to Notion 
because it is so fast to take notes in this app. If you have questions on Obsidian or want to know more or about how I manage my notes, then definitely leave a comment in the section below and I will address it and answer as many questions as I can. I appreciate you watching. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.